Hi, Arrow. Hi. Hello, and good morning, you two. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. Thanks for having us. Oh, I got to tell you, if I were your father, I'd be sitting you both down on the sofa saying, what are you thinking? Put your head on straight. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my goodness. I mean, to go into the badlands of Colombia is one thing, but look at what you guys did. You stretched it from a normal 21 days to 40 days. I, I don't know how your bodies even survived. It really takes, you really have to dig down deep and it really takes um, some serious skills. Uh, an XL isn't something, 40 days isn't something that you can just skate through. I feel like you really have to, you know, use your grit and your willpower and your mind and you really need to hone in on those skills and use them when you're out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, you're absolutely right. If, if, if someone can figure it out, they can explain it to me. But, you know, it's... Uh... 40 days is, is plenty enough time for the human body to starve to death, given the right or should I say wrong conditions. Well, one of the things that I learned in becoming a third degree black belt is the fact that in 30 days, you've created new habits. You were out there 40 days. So I have to ask you, what was the habit that you adopted? Um, for me, it was like, I don't know if it's necessarily like a habit, but for from going without food for so long, now it's just the idea of knowing that I have it offers like a comfort for me. So I like, I got like a basket of snacks next to my bed <laughs> just so I can know that they're there. I, uh, I definitely agree, you know, in, in that kind of situation, um, we're all creatures of habit and uh, attempting to um, get yourself, get yourself, get your body into a, a routine of some description um, is definitely an important factor on these challenges. On my first challenge, um, getting up with the rising sun, letting the sun hit my skin and having a little moment of uh, uh, to just take the, take the environment I was in uh, and go and get the water, start collecting firewood and keeping that routine going, uh, adding to it um, and reviewing it at the end of each day is, is definitely an important factor in making it through these challenges, Arrow. So let me ask you, Lindsay, when, when we talk like that, where you're, where you're constantly working on everything that needs to happen in, in everything going forward, you didn't feel trapped inside that jungle, did you? It, it, it was open, but you, you had to be working that mind all day long. Yeah, um, and there, there are definitely the nights I feel like is when I started to feel like I was trapped inside my head or inside the jungle a little bit. Um, but I tried to look at it as you know, trying, I wanted to work with mother nature and work with my environment and not try to conquer it, but work with it in hopes that it would be kind to me and hopes that it would help me out a little bit. Um, But I I feel like at nighttime when it's cold and it's hard finding firewood that's dry and Mm -hmm. it's raining, um, yet you do feel trapped inside the jungle and inside your own head, definitely. Mm, mm. Now, Sam, I, I live in a forest and I will not go out into this forest at night. I don't know how the hell you guys did it, because I mean, because those trees and what's living in that forest plays with your imagination. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I would I would definitely agree um, I, I, on my first challenge, uh, you know, the, the, but but very quickly the mind adapts and um, you know it, it becomes more like navigating uh, your own home. Eventually, uh, towards the end of the challenge, you know you start to figure out where where each tree is so you don't stub your toe. Yeah. And you know it's it becomes very much like navigating around your living room, around the furniture towards the end. But yeah, it uh, it certainly takes a lot to adapt uh, initially. That's for sure. Now, Lindsay, to adapt, did you did you do any prep or anything like that beforehand? Because I'd be walking around the house with like a blindfold or something on so I can learn the art of truly listening. Um, I think I did a lot of like practicing my skills as far as that, like as far as trying to prepare myself and prep myself. Um, I worked on making like fishing nets and I really worked on building shelter better and my fire skills just tried to like hone in on those things that I knew I had some skill in from my 21, but I really, I really tried to work on those. 
Um, as far as like mentally though, I don't think there's anything that can fully mentally prepare yourself to take on a 40 day challenge. I feel like it's every day for me was something I thought, Oh, I have this in the bag. Well, no, you don't, you don't have it in the bag, you better figure it out. <laughs> Sam, I've got a neighbor, his name is Fred. And any anytime I do anything outside, he's coming over there to make sure I've got the right shoes on, I've got the goggles on, and, and I hear of you guys building these 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 little places to live inside and getting the fire. You you ain't got nothing on. My my neighbor Fred would be all over you guys. <laughs> Well, yeah, Fred would definitely be uh, upset, um, and, and and he's absolutely right. Um, I would say like a, a high percentage of injuries that uh, that take place on these challenges uh, usually is with an item that you've bought with you, uh, whether it be the edge tools or something like that, or the fire. Um, or, 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 you know, again, fire is, is a huge risk even in the modern world. So you can imagine when you're living in a in a in a wooden shelter that you've thrown up. Um, so, yeah, um, definitely maximum, maximum discipline and caution around the sharps and the fire. But as you've alluded to before, you know, you can develop routines around these things, but always to, to remain, you know, conscious that they're there every time you pick the knife up. You make sure that it goes back in its sheath mm -hmm. and you treat it with, as, as with any tool, uh, with the respect and discipline that it deserves. Did the two of you, when you were inside that jungle and your body has to work as one solid unit, did you find yourself using all, like both, I, I like using both of my hands at the same time. It's not a left side, right side kind of thing. The whole body's got to be involved. Did you find yourself doing that as well? Oh yeah, hundred percent. I feel like even like you're putting like things in your mouth and holding on to yeah. them to tie a knot with with something. You know, you're utilizing every little part of your body. I think I put things in between like my toes to like hold, <laughs> so I can pull with my other with my hands. Like you definitely you're using parts of your body and using muscles and things in your body that you didn't really realize that you use in the normal world. You, you've also got like the, the the first several days where you're kind of reaching for pockets that aren't there, <laughs> <laughs> or, 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 or I'll just Google that and realizing that you don't actually have a device, let alone a pocket. <laughs> it, it's going to be 90 degrees here in the Carolinas, and we're already complaining about it because it's still the you know the month of May. I don't know how you guys dealt with triple digit temperatures and without really any any protection outside of Mother Nature around you. Yeah, I feel like we really had to utilize like shade. We'd have to take breaks. And we, when we found a shady spot, we would use it. Um, and then you would go to the jungle to get cold. But then it's like the the different terrains going to the jungle, it had its pros and cons. I mean, it's, it's wet and damp. And it's sure it's blocking you from the sun. So you're not getting sunburnt, but it's freezing cold at nighttime. And there's no dry firewood. And there's, it was... It's a whole, a whole crazy mess of things like that that you would think that would work out, but they just contradict each other. Like, oh, let's go here, let's do this, and then that doesn't work. So, well, uh, being from the United Kingdom myself, I mean, just to describe British summertime, we have about two weeks a year where the rain gets a little bit warmer. <laughs> um, so, yeah, being thrust into uh, equatorial heat. And uh, not to mention the ultraviolet. Uh, all I can say is this uh, this delicate English rose that I am uh, <laughs> certainly withered a little bit. Uh. Sending men and women up into space, we've, we've created new tools for us down here on Earth. You going into the jungles where you had to create your own tools, have you been able to bring those home and, and use those as a tool that you that you picked up inside the jungle? I feel like there are definitely a lot of things that I have learned um, being out in the jungle. I don't use them in my day-to-day -day life per se, but I definitely, it, it teaches you to like use a different side of your brain. Like yep. my problem solving skills are a little bit better. Um, and it's things that I've taught my kids that when I come home, it's, it's things that's good. I feel like everybody should have a set of survival skills in their back pocket. You know, it strips you down to the basics of what our ancestors years and you know hundreds of thousands of years ago and i feel like it's just it's very important to have those skills even if you don't use them in your normal day-to-day -day life it's important to have them i i, I agree with lindsay 100 you know uh, i i think uh 
you know, we'd call it a make do and mend kind of attitude in our regular life or, you know, but definitely hones one's ability to uh, improvise and adapt uh, a lot more. Uh, And as you alluded to, with it being uh, similar to astronauts, yeah, it's uh, if I mean, to put it in perspective, what Naked and Afraid is, is the absolute polar opposite to what NASA get up to (laughs) in the, you know, the highest end of technology. Um, and this is the most primitive side of things. But as you've said, it's um, there are a lot of similarities. You know, you come across a problem that was unforeseen and you have to improvise a solution. Uh, you know, every environment that humans place themselves in uh, is a puzzle to be solved. Wow. Please come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Well, thank you so much for having us. You'd be brilliant today. OK, you too. Thank you. You too.